You're listening to Stand Out Get Noticed, episode 212. Hello Rockstar, Christina Cantor's with you here for another episode of Stand Out Get Noticed. You can learn more about The C Method, which is the company I run, where I help high-performing professionals and business leaders to build powerful communication skills at thecmethod.com. Now, today's podcast is all about changing the stories you tell yourself. This is a big one, my friends. It is powerful. It's so powerful that I use it in all my coaching sessions and I teach it in my group program. I believe that this is an incredible way to get in touch with your thoughts, your feelings in order to make big changes in your life. And the cool thing is you don't need a coaching session to do this. You can do this yourself and I'm going to show you how in this episode. Now, what do I mean when I say story? So what we tell ourselves is what we believe. We encounter all different circumstances in our lives all day, every day. And the way we view these circumstances, the way we think about them and the stories we create about them, they impact our emotions, our actions, and therefore our quality of life. And the story is exactly that. It's made up. We attach it to an external happening or an experience. You know, so when we encounter something, it's usually outside of our control. For example, the train runs late. So we're waiting for the train, it runs late. That is outside our control. Now, everyone waiting for the train is experiencing that train running late. So it's the same thing happening, but the story each person attaches to that experience is going to be different. For example, one person's story could be the train is late, this is terrible. I'm going to be late to work and my boss is going to yell at me. So that's one story. Another person's story could be, the train is late. Amazing. I get to spend a few more minutes finishing this chapter in my book. Now, each of those stories is going to create a different emotion in that person. Who do you think is going to be the happier person in that situation? Probably the person who thinks that the train running late is amazing. The person who thinks it's a terrible thing is likely to feel down and stressed and anxious. Anxious. And this happens throughout our lives. That's one simple example, but it's happening all the time. We attach stories to circumstances, whether they are good stories that that help us or whether they're negative stories that do not serve us. Now, the key thing to realize here is that they are called stories because that is all they are. They are not necessarily true. A train running late is neither good nor bad. It's simply the meaning that we attach to it through a story. Okay? There's a, um, a fable, they call it a fable, of a man who, um, he, it's a story of a, of a man who ran into, he had, you know, he, something happened to him. His son um, broke his leg. And everyone else in the village said to him, oh, that's, that's bad. And he said, maybe yes, maybe no. And then the next day, the army came round to grab all of the, the, the sons in the village to, to be enlisted into the army. But his son couldn't because he had a broken leg. So all of the villagers said, oh, that's so good. And he said, maybe yes, maybe no. And the fable continues around these circumstances happening um, but, and certain people saying that's good or that's bad. But the farmer saying, or the villager saying, it's, it's neither. So what that illustrates is that we attach meaning via stories to these different experiences. Now, we have the ability to choose which stories we tell ourselves and which ones to believe. So we have just as much, you know, let's say someone walks past us and we say hello. They don't say hi back. We can choose, we have the ability to choose whether we attach a positive story to that. Maybe they're stressed and busy and it's got nothing to do with me. Or maybe we attach a negative story that doesn't help us. Oh, I must have done done something that annoyed that person. Unfortunately, we tend to choose to believe the stories that do not help us. And I see this all the time in my clients and I'm certain that these are running through your mind, will have run through your mind at certain points. And it happens to me as well. 
Some of these stories could include, but definitely not limited to, my presentation has to be perfect, otherwise I won't look knowledgeable. I always go blank when I stand up to present. If they don't like my idea, they will think I don't know my stuff. If I talk about myself, others will think I'm bragging. My colleagues aren't smiling at me, they must think I'm boring. My boss is always impatient with me. They will never pick me for that opportunity. And so on and so forth. As you can hear, these stories are quite varied and they're, I've related them back to, you know, the work context or, or speaking. But there, we can have stories, I mean, and we, we do have stories in all different areas of our lives, with our family, our friends, with our money, our hobbies, our health. The stories that are not constructive will hold us back from progressing, growing and achieving the success we want. Carl Greer said, to transform our lives, we need to change our stories. And I believe Tony Robbins paraphrased and said, change your story, change your life. He always likes a good punchy quote. (laughs) So what I'm going to do today, dear Rockstar, I'm going to take you step by step through the process of how to shift those stories that might be holding you back. We're going to challenge the stories that we tell ourselves. Now, this exercise, I warn you now, it's not a surface level exercise. It goes deep. So I I recommend you take notes if you can, or if you're driving or out and about, listen to this again when you're at home and relaxed and comfortable so you can take the time to reflect, to be curious, open and vulnerable. When you dedicate the time to diving into your stories, incredible things can happen. So it's well worth doing. All right, so how do we do it? The first thing is to be aware of what is the story that we're telling ourselves. And the story that, or, or stories that we might want to work on are the ones that cause us some discomfort. So write down a belief or a story that creates stress, anxiety, or frustration within you. It could be about a situation at work, for example, um, I'm not good enough to go for that opportunity. Or maybe it could be about a specific person, such as my boss doesn't respect me, my kids are lazy, for example. You can even think of something in your personal life, um, you know, I'm, I'm no good with money, and so on. So whatever story you've noticed that you tell yourself when that, that, that creates discomfort. Now I'm going to go through a series of questions that I'm basing on um, a series of questions by Byron Katie. Now she's a true leader in the personal development space. She's amazing. She has videos on her website of her coaching people through these questions and it gets really heavy, but it's a, it's, it's fascinating to watch. Well, it is for me anyway, it's called the work. That's what she calls it. I'm not copying it directly, but it is based on that. So the first question to ask yourself, you've got your story. The first question is to ask yourself, is it true? Now let's take the example that I mentioned earlier. Um, Let's say you're at work and your colleague walks past. You say hi to them. Hi, Jim. But they keep walking without saying hello back. Your story in that moment runs, they must Jim must be annoyed at me for something. What did I do wrong? Okay, that's the story. Jim is annoyed at me. I must have done something wrong. And you might, if that is the case, you may have then spent the rest of the morning mulling over what could have happened. What did I do? Did I do this? Does he not like me anymore? Does he not think I'm valuable as a colleague? You might feel despondent, distracted. Your mood starts to impact your work. You can see how these stories can start to play on our minds. And mind you, many of us have stories that have played on our minds for our entire lives. I've met people before who have said that as young, um, young women or young girls, they were told, don't speak up, no one wants to hear what you have to say. Now that is an incredibly damaging and disempowering story to tell yourself. Can you imagine that these people I met who told me this, they grew up their entire lives believing 
that they should not speak up because they don't have anything useful to say. And that then affected their personal not personal life, professional life, etc. Okay, so let's go back to that example. Your colleague walks past, doesn't say hi back to you. You're thinking, he must be annoyed at me. So the question is, the first question is, is it true? You might say, yeah, of course it's true. He ignored me. Can't you see that? It's true. Okay. The next question that Byron Katie asks is, can you absolutely know it's true? In other words, are you 100% certain that it's true? Would you bet your life on it being true? In which case, with our example, I would say, mm, uh, okay, I know. I don't know for 100% that it's true. Okay, so we've determined that the story you're telling yourself, you can't absolutely be sure that it's true. Now, the next question is, how do you feel when you believe that thought to be true? So taking the thought of, my colleague is annoyed at me, I did something wrong. How do I feel when I believe that? Well, I feel sad. I feel confused. And these are all things you can write down, by the way. So how, how do you feel? And really think about it. Really feel those feelings. Anxious, stressed. I had a client, um, he came in the other day and he told me that he gets really, um, he said when people look at him before they've even asked a question, right, to speak up to a group, when he is looked at, he gets anxious. And I asked him, what is the story you're telling yourself? And his story around that was, she's going to ask me a question that I can't answer. That was the story he was telling himself. Now, when I I challenged him, I said, is it true? Can you absolutely know it's true? And he said, no, I, I don't know if that's true or not. When I asked, how do you feel when you believe that thought to be true? He says, he said, I feel anxious, I feel fear, I feel shame because I I can't answer the, because I I think I can't answer the question. Now, this is all happening before he's even asked a question. This is happening when someone looks at him during a, a group discussion. Okay. Now, I share that because I just want to give some examples as to how this impacts all of us on a daily basis. And it can just be a simply innocuous thing. Like I'm looked, I'm given a look by someone. That is enough to trigger these stories. All right. So the question was, how do you feel when you believe that thought to be true? And it's usually, you know, negative thoughts, sad, I feel confused, helpless. Now, the next question is, who would you be without that thought? So let's say you didn't have the thought. Let's say you just got rid of it. How would you feel? So taking my example um, of the thought that my colleague is annoyed at me, I did something wrong. If I didn't have that thought, so if I didn't think my colleague was annoyed at me, if I didn't think that I did something wrong, I would probably feel at ease. I'd feel happier and I probably wouldn't worry about it. Now, it's at this point in the process where you start to realize, oh, I can actually imagine myself not having that thought, right? You can, you can create this. You know what it's like to feel without that thought. And what's so powerful is that when you realize that you, can, you don't need to believe that thought, which is the next part, when you realize you don't need to believe that thought, how much happier and at ease and relaxed you can be. So let's move on to the next point, which is, so we've realized now that you would be happier, less stressed, at ease, relaxed if you didn't have that thought. Now we're moving on to what are three other stories that could explain their behavior or this situation? So now's the time to use your imagination and make up some stories. So let's say, okay, my colleague has walked past me. He hasn't said hello. Uh, some, Some alternative stories could be, 
Maybe they were preoccupied with something really stressful. Yeah, that's a, that's equal, that could be equally true. Maybe they were running late to a meeting and were focused on that. That could also equally be true. Maybe they didn't hear me say hi because they were wearing tiny little Bluetooth headphones and I didn't see them. That could also equally be true. So what is so powerful here is that when, when we create alternative stories, we realise that that initial story, the, the, the non-constructive one, was made up in our mind just as easily as we made up these alternatives. Now, the difference between the initial one and the alternatives is that the alternatives help us to feel happier and more at ease. Because if, I'm, if, I, if someone ignores me and I tell myself the story, oh, maybe they were just running late to a meeting, am I going to feel sad and confused? No. I'm going to feel, I don't know, neutral. I'm going to feel, uh, what's the word for not worried? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing so well with my words here. I'll just I'll just relax and, and, and it won't bother me for the rest of the day. Yeah? So it's easy, it's just as easy to believe an alternative story that helps you than it is to believe a non-constructive um, belief, a story that does not help you. So I challenge you this week to apply this. Now, you may not necessarily go through all these questions, but the first step, the very first step, is to become aware of the stories you're telling yourself. And I I worked on this with another client earlier today, simply noticing. So when you're in a situation that maybe um, you're in a a high-pressure meeting or you are presenting or you're asked to speak up, or even at home, you know, your kids are screaming and running around and you feel this discomfort. You feel something bubbling up inside of you. It could be rage. It could be anxiety. It could be fear. It could be shame. And you just think, oh no. And you can feel it in your body. You know what I'm talking about. We all experience this. You feel it in your body. I want you to pause and, and instead of trying to, to, to push that away or react to that feeling, take a step back, take a deep breath and be curious about where that is coming from and be curious about the story you're telling yourself in that moment without judgment. So you're not, you're not judging yourself for having that feeling. You're not saying, oh, I shouldn't be angry or oh, stop getting stressed. You shouldn't be stressed. You shouldn't be anxious. It's not about that. It's simply pausing and being curious about that feeling and saying, huh, I'm noticing some anxiety coming up. I wonder where that's coming from. I wonder what the story is that I'm telling myself right now that is creating this feeling. Hmm. So you're not judging yourself. You're not saying, oh, I shouldn't be feeling anxious. You're, you're an idiot for always feeling anxious. It's not about that. It's playful curiosity. Now, we, go, we dive deeper into this in the episode I recorded with Fabian Datner. She is amazing. You must go back and listen to that. I'll link it up in the show notes. Um, we, we, go, we dive deep into, into stories. And also, I talk about stories in the episode where I, um, called How to Deal with Difficult Audience Members. Now, that one's disguised as dealing with different audience members, but it really is about stories. And in that, I share a very real experience that I had where I had to shift my story very quickly in the moment when I started to feel those feelings of discomfort as well. So if this has resonated with you and you're thinking, oh, I really want to try this, then you might need to listen again to this to go through the steps and also, if you go to the show notes at thecmethod.com slash 212, I will put in a link there to Byron Katie's The Work, and she's got lots of worksheets on there. Um, so if you want to recap, go to the show notes, check that out, or re-listen to this podcast and write down your answers to the questions as you go. But, bef- but first, and this is your first challenge, and if it's your only challenge, that's totally fine, 
is to start being aware of these stories you tell yourself and and be curious about where they're coming from and what they are, okay? I hope that that has been useful for you and given you something to think about. If you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate it if you could share it with a friend. That would be amazing. It's one of the best ways for this episode to get listened to by more people. And also, a couple of calls to actions for you. I would love for you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you are on LinkedIn, I have been posting videos up there. I've been getting really active and and um, really spending more time on there, wanting to um, get super good, <laughs> I suppose, at LinkedIn. I'm still learning. So if you're on there, I would love to connect with you. Send me a connection request, Christina Cantor's, just my name. I'll, I'll be there. And make sure you write a little note as well when you connect to say, hey, I'm a podcast listener. would love to connect. That would be awesome. All right. Have a wonderful week, rock star. And I will talk to you soon. I'm Christina Cantor's and this has been Stand Out, Get Noticed. <laughs> <laughs>